Hello and welcome back to SLAB. Today we've got something truly special for Mac Mini M4 users who want to take their setup to the next level. We're going hands-on with the ACASIS 40 GBPS Mac Mini Dock, which seems, as far as I can see, to be one of the best 8-in-1 dual display port docks available at the time, especially considering its reasonable price tag. And no, we are not talking about those half-baked USB-C hubs. This is pure Thunderbolt 4, just as it should be. Right from the start, it's clear the ACASIS dock is all about speed and seamless integration. Forget placing it underneath the cube, your Mac Mini M4 actually slots into the enclosure, giving your desk a sleek and clean look and even tighter hardware dock integration. You get two card slots up front, SD and TF 4.0 supporting speeds up to 312 MB per second, in my own tests, I managed at least 255 MB per second read speed. The front also features three USB-A 3.2 generation 2 ports. Finally, USB-A on the front of the Mac again, I missed them so much. On the back, you'll find Thunderbolt 4 for Mac Mini M4 connectivity and an extra 30 watts power delivery input. I already mentioned the two display ports, but when you look at the Mac Mini M4 as a closed system together with the dock, you still get its two USB-C ports and the 3.5 mm headphone jack up front, plus LAN, HDMI and two more Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt 5 ports with the Mac Mini M4 Pro at the back. Photo and video importing is much quicker through the integrated SD slot than on regular USB docks. If copying cards via my Ugreen dock was already a head-to-head -head race with my old Asus Studiobook 16, the ACASIS dock is practically light speed by comparison. But what truly sets a cases apart for me is what's inside. It offers room for two NVMe SSDs, both connected at full speed via included Thunderbolt 4. This is PCIe generation 3x2 for both SSD channels according to the specs. That's up to 40 GBPS across the board and it works wonders because even the basic Mac Mini M4 handles Thunderbolt 4 natively. The M4 Pro version even offers Thunderbolt 5 at the back, but fear not, it's fully backward compatible. Now for the fun part, speed and SSDs, which is where opinions in some reviews vary. Directly connected, a single SSD supposedly hits up to 1600 MB per second read speed according to a cases. Use both SSDs in RAID 0, software defined, and it's claimed to reach 2800 MB per second, faster than the old but gold Mac Mini Air M1. My own Mac Mini M4 hit around 3000 MB per second read and write. So using RAID 0, those two SSDs will nearly match the Mac Mini M4's native speed. To be fair, I never reached the full 2800 MB per second promised by the manufacturer, more like 2780 MB per second writing and 2550 MB per second reading. But that might be just the SSD models I used, more on that later. Apart from that, here is what matters most to me. Data security. For my setup, I go with RAID 1, meaning the two SSDs are mirrored with redundancy, taking priority. RAID 1 is, of course, slower than RAID 0 because every file gets written to both devices, but if one fails, you still have a complete copy of your precious data. And apart from that, 
if absolute top speed is your thing, the M002 Plus version from Acasis is worth a look. Supporting PCIe Generation 4X2, it promises even higher transfer rates. As soon as it's available, I'll drop a link in the video description. Speaking of which, the affiliate links down there let you order drives directly from Acasis. They are not yet on Amazon. You pay the same and Acasis throws me a small bonus. Thanks for the support. Believe me, these videos eat up a lot of my precious lifetime. Just check the number of my followers. By now, nobody is paying me for it. By the way, you may also help me out on that. To save money, I picked up two Lexar NM7101 terabyte SSDs, the cheapest 1TB models I found on Amazon. They were even more affordable because I bought some returns. No, of course, they're not Samsung or Western Digital flagships, but with up to 50 hundred MB per second read and write speeds, they are still way beyond what the dock could even handle. There is a link in the description if you're curious. The accessories are straightforward. A power supply, if you want to power the dock directly, it works fine for me, just off Thunderbolt 4 from the Mac, a screwdriver, a USB-C power cable, a manual, and a couple of thermal pads. The enclosure itself feels really premium and for the freaks among you, with the vent grill, which will then be close to the underside of your Mac Mini, it's possible to create the weirdest abstract sounds that will blow your mind. Fun at first, but if you use your Mac Mini M4 as an audio output, odd frequencies can mess with your Mac Mini M4's audio output. Be it as it is, I output audio through my LG 4K monitor and therefore I had no issues. More importantly, I noticed no drop in Wi-Fi performance when using the dock. Transfer rates matched those outside the enclosure. For installing the SSDs, just unscrew the cover on the opposite side and slot them in. Be gentle, there are little pegs to secure them horizontally. Actually, with me, one layer of the thermal pad didn't bridge the gap to the heat dissipating plate which will then later be screwed on. Well, anyhow, since I had four pieces, I doubled them up and this works perfectly so far. No issues, no crashes. Then close it all up, connect the Mac Mini M4, plug the power and Thunderbolt cable and you're good to go. Thanks to the physical switch on the side, you can conveniently power your Mac Mini M4 on and off. Let me know in the comments if you'd like a dedicated SSD configuration video, RAID 0 versus RAID 1. Keyword data redundancy and why it matters to me. I picked this dual SSD version because data safety is more relevant to me. My tests paint an interesting picture. Write speeds in RAID 1 are a bit lower than in RAID 0, of course. No surprise there. But the download speed or the read speed was shockingly fast. I managed almost 2500 MB per second reading from the dock in RAID 1. And for me, that's the real benefit. I rarely write larger amounts to the drives in an urge. What matters is how fast I can access and read the data from that space. At the end of the day, 
When writing at 2000 or just 1600 megabits per second on the external SSDs, I don't really care. But for reading, this dock is almost catching up with the Mac Mini M4's built-in SSD. I can seamlessly edit complex projects while pulling simultaneously from both the internal SSD and my RAID 1 archive as well. So I don't get the complaints from folks saying this dock is slow, maybe they're using it on the moon. If you're curious about RAID configs and real speed differences, let me know in the comments and I'll make a deep dive video. That's my first super positive impression of the Acasis 40 GBPS Mac Mini Dock and SSD Enclosure, what a beautiful name. If you're after real Thunderbolt 4 support, flexible SSD upgrades and true data redundancy for your Mac Mini M4, this is my clear recommendation. You'll find more technical details in the video description and once the new M002 Plus top model is out, I'll post an update directly under this video. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, hit subscribe and share it with anyone you think would be interested in this setup. For suggestions and deeper questions, dive into the comments, I read and answer them all. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time on SLAP. Bye bye. Bye bye. But fear not, it's fully backwards compatible. It's fully. <laughs> but fear not, it's fully hits up to 1000 hits up to 1600 MB per second, hits up to 1600 MB per second read speed and it's claimed to reach 2800 MB per, MB per second, 2800 MB per second, faster than the old but gold Mac Mini Air M1, faster than the old but gold Mac Mini Air M1. For my setup I go with RAID 1, meaning the two SSDs are mirrored with redundancy, taking priority. Fast, I managed almost two th I managed almost 2500 megabit per s I managed almost 2500 MB per second reading from the dock, but with up to 5000 M but with up to five into the enclosure, into the enclosure.